guys. Happy Sunday evening. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, not sure if you're aware, but I am talking about uh, teaching what you know, creating an additional six-figure stream of revenue. Teaching what you know, creating an additional six-figure stream of revenue. I'm not going to put that comment up, but but thank you. Uh, have you any of you ever felt that way, like you were at uh, the pinnacle of your career or um, maybe even in your business, maybe that you've outgrown um, a, maybe that you've outgrown a particular role that you're planning in your business. Um, and it's not always because things are terrible financially in the current position that you're in, right? But it's just something on the inside that's pulling you towards something else, do something different. For many of you, it may be a new level of time freedom, right? So it's like, I would be okay with this revenue that I'm currently earning, but I just need a new level of time freedom. So one of the things that happened for me was when I opened my brick and mortar service-based business, got married and had a baby in a three-year time frame. And it was during that time that I started feeling burned out and overwhelmed. And so when women come to me for support in their business and they're talking about overwhelm, the frustration that they're experiencing, I know firsthand what they mean. Now, it may be coming from different things. Some of you have simply outgrown you know, where you currently are. And then others of you know that there's something more for you. You have a desire to do more. But I have been in this place um, here lately that I, I can't put full words to it. I've been trying to like find the words and express it on social media, but I just don't think I've been doing it justice. And I don't think it's something that you really ever can explain until you get into that particular position. So many people have dreams and goals and, and visions, and they kind of keep putting them on the back burner for a few reasons. And I want to talk about some of those reasons why you may not be stepping into your next level, um, your next space, a uh, new level of freedom, or whatever it is that you're desiring deep down in your heart. I want to talk about that tonight. And then I want to talk about the fact that more than likely, with the number of years or the number of hours, and I say the number of years or the number of hours, because most people equate years with expertise. Most people equate number of years with level of experience, and they're two completely different things. Now, we've noticed in the uh, social media space now, there are individuals who haven't been doing you know, certain things very long, but they're very successful. But they've been putting in a lot of work. They've been putting in what I call a lot of practice, because what it takes to become great at something is practice. There's a study that says um, if you do something over 10,000 hours, you become an expert at it, right? And so there are many of you who have put that practice in and you may be feeling a little uncomfortable as if you should be doing something different or there's something more for you, but you just can't seem to put your fingers on it. Instead of moving in alignment with what you're feeling and what you're experiencing on the inside, because what you have going on, your now is okay. It's just not fulfilling. So your now may be somewhat comfortable, but not necessarily comfortable. You stay in that space. You think it's going to be harder at the next round. I think what, what I found is many of the things that we think about this entrepreneurial journey that are going to be super hard are really not nearly as hard as we think. And they really don't take nearly as long as we thought they did or we had imagined. Most of the difficulty is up here. It's in our mindset. It's because it's un an unfamiliar space or it requires us to do things that are different from what we've normally done. So we automatically start saying in our mind that this is going to be hard or I think what, what I found is many of the things that we think about this entrepreneurial journey that are going to be super hard are really not nearly as hard as we think. 
and they really don't take nearly as long as we thought they did or we had imagined. Most of the difficulty is up here. It's in our mindset. It's because it's un an unfamiliar space or um, it requires us to do things that are different from what we've normally done. So we automatically start saying in our mind that this is going to be hard or uh, maybe for you, your next level is hiring someone for, for your business. And maybe you've kind of put your foot in the water a little bit from that perspective and it didn't go so well. So you've already set in your mind that hiring, developing a team, growing your business, doing it outside of you being the solopreneur is going to be hard. It's something you've already told yourself. And oftentimes people will go, we as people, we go all the way around the world with processes that are really simple. They're really not nearly as hard as we make them. We make them hard in, in our minds. So maybe you think it's going to be hard and that's the reason why you haven't stepped out to do that thing that's on the inside of you. Maybe you can't really process the how. So I think I've had probably three individuals in the last week and a half to two weeks. I'm wondering if there's a way, okay. Hey, Stephanie, how are you, dear? I'm actually attempting to breeze through these comments that I'm seeing <clears throat> so that I can see which ones to pull up on the screen. And that's because, listen, guys, I used to do Periscope before I, before Facebook Live ever, you know, started allowing live streaming. And one of the things was the trolls, right? And so if you guys do live stream or are thinking about live streaming on Periscope, you got to have extreme focus because there are several comments over here on the right that I'm just acting like they're not even there. <laughs> so, and that's sometimes what you have to do when it comes to a vision goal or dream that you have. There are going to be things that are sent to distract you, right? But if you have a level of focus and you're in alignment, you can act as if that those things aren't even there. You can eat the meat and spit out the bones. So I'm able to like pick the comments that matter, address them, speak to them, and put them up on, on the screen. And actually, I started reading a couple of those comments at first, you know, like in my mind, not out loud. And then I noticed they kind of were going left. And I immediately said, you know, I'm not watching that anymore because the people can't see it <laughs> on my screen right now. They can't see it, uh, but but I can see it. One of the reasons why we don't take that next step for that next level of growth in our business is because we're trying to figure out the how. I'm sharing with you all that maybe over the last you know few weeks, I've had about three individuals to share with me. So I hadn't talked to them in quite some time. They may have been a customer at my previous brick and mortar business. I owned a brick and mortar business for 10 years prior to coaching and consulting for women in business on, um, full time. And I have people reach out to me for um, services or not sure if we're still open or whatever the case may be. And when I tell them, you know, I'm no longer in that business, they'll ask what I'm doing. And, they, and when I tell them that I'm coaching and consulting full time, and I normally, you know, share my website with them as well because I don't know where they're at, right? They may be an individual who is looking to take their expertise and monetize it. I have several clients from my older business, actually, who were professional working women who were professors at colleges and deans and attorneys, attorneys' wives. I have several nurses who want to monetize their expertise. So I never take that for granted. And one of the things they share with me is, wow, I remember you saying that. Now, I don't remember specifically telling those individuals, those specific individuals, you know, what I was wanting to do as far as opening, you know, a consulting business or, or anything of that me measure. But I'm sure I told several people. And I told them because I believed in what I was building. I'm going to put that in the comments. I'm going to word it a different way. You can't build what you don't believe. But I'm always in awe because I'm like, man, I must have been, 
telling everybody, you know, what I was planning on doing. And guys, it's not because I, I necessarily knew the how. Does that make sense to you all? It's not because I necessarily knew the how. I just knew. I had done some research. I had gotten some results before I even, you know, knew what it was necessarily. And I believe that if I put my mind to it, I could figure that thing out. And when I say figure it out, I mean, I knew that as I took one step, the next step would appear, whether it was the person who would help me with my next level, whether it was the next move that I needed to make, whether it was the next book I needed to read, class I needed to take, I just knew. And that is when we're operating from a space of abundance. We're, we're not thinking from a space of lack. We're thinking there's plenty of every single thing that I need. I'm always reminded of hearing Tony Robbins say, um, he asked a question to all these small businesses that went out of business. And so most of you know that statistics are high for the number of people who start a business and you know the business fails within the first. Collectively, what I'm sharing with you is gonna make sense. But there's another percentage for people who make it to five years and then those who make it to 10 years in their business. But all of the people who ended up having a failing business were asked the question why their business failed. And they gave all the reasons. Lack of staff, um, you know, couldn't find good help. Uh, they lacked the resources, wrong location, all the things which are definitely variables for businesses that fail. But Tony said none of those were really, really the answer. It was the lack of resourcefulness. And being resourceful really comes from a place of belief. It comes from believing that what it is that you have has value and you know that someone somewhere is going to find value in it. And then you just make yourself responsible of figuring out what that somewhere is, where that somewhere is, and who that someone is. <clears throat> it made me think about uh, a story I heard about a father whose son brought him, showed him a rock. And he asked his dad how much the, the rock was valued at. And the dad told him to take the rock to the flea market. And someone offered him $2 for the rock. So each place that the dad sent the son with the stone, he said, go tell me what the people say and how much it is, you know, don't sell it. So he goes to the flea market and they offer him five, no, $2 for the rock. He comes home, tells his dad, and then his dad sends him to a uh, museum. And he said, okay, now you take the rock to this museum and tell me how much they offer you for the rock. Just show them the rock um, and then let them give you a price. At the museum, they offered him $200 for the rock. So the third place that his dad sends him is to a precious stone dealer. Now the dealer offered him $200,000 for the rock. Now the rock didn't change at all. It's the same rock that he took to the flea market and that he took to all the places. However, when he placed the valuable piece of, you know, rock in front, well, we call it precious jewel now because we know that's actually what it was. When he put it in front of the right people, those people understood the value. And what many people struggle with in the entrepreneurial space with their products, their services, their intellectual property is putting it in front of the wrong people, right? And so those people don't necessarily find value in it. They couldn't fathom paying what the item that you're offering, the opportunity that you're offering is worth because you have it in front of the wrong people, but it's not necessarily because it isn't of value. It's one of the things I help my clients to do is position themselves, find out who their perfect people are first, right? We have to figure out who those perfect people are, who are those precious stone dealers who would understand the value of what it is that you have to offer. Because listen, everybody is not going to value it the same. And she says, yes, they're just not gonna value it the same. So one of the things I do is take my clients through the process of one, understanding the value of what they offer and then figuring out who are your perfect people who would also find value in it, who will be able to hear you talk about what it is that you offer. And they're like, I know this has value. 
The investment may be more, but I understand the value, the impact that it's going to have on my life or my business. I'm going to give you guys uh, something I thought about earlier today. So during the COVID, uh, stay at home and all the things, I mean, we did like quarantine, like quarantine, quarantine. You know how you put the other word, another word behind it when you want to put emphasis on it. So mass, my daughter and I literally had not seen anyone in our family without having a mask on. We hugged no one. And the only person that we really saw was my mom. And that was, we didn't even hug her. We would exchange items that were rare that we found at stores with one another, you know, air hug and keep it moving. And so after about three months, my daughter was fine at first, but after about three months, I could tell, you know, this was becoming difficult for her. And my mom suggested that, you know, I get her a pet. She has allergies. So dogs, although we had one for years, um, she would have to, t he couldn't like come in the house like that. She couldn't be really active with him. And she would have to continuously take allergy me medicine to like be in his presence. If it was my choice, we wouldn't even have had a dog, you know, in the home, but that's a whole nother situation. So um, I ended up getting her, agreeing to allow her to have a cat. Now, listen, I ain't even like cats, y'all. And I don't know if it's a cultural thing. <laughs> But I just didn't like cats. It's crazy because I actually had a cat as a little girl. So we pick out kittens. We were supposed to pick out a kitten for her. We we end up getting um, two kittens. And I hope I can remember where I'm going <laughs> with this cat story. But it just came in my mind how we, you know, allow her, oh, to get a cat doing and so the cats love to scratch. We bought them scratching posters. But while you're training the cats, they may scratch on different things. So there is a particular chair that some of their little claws got in before they were able to fully be trained. And I was like, I'm going to Google because I, I know someone somewhere has made a product that will allow you to mend like leather or something of that nature, whatever the material is they make now. Um, to be able to fix this chair, right? And in my mind, I hadn't put a price on it because of the value that it would mean to me to be able to fix that. Does that make sense to you guys? And so I want you to know that even if you feel that several people are doing what you have to offer, there's something unique about you that's just going to stand out completely different and someone is going to find extreme value in it. But you got to find value in what you're offering first. And here's a couple of things you can do in order to do that. One, you have to stop looking at uh, the majority of the people who are in your exact industry. I know y'all don't want to hear this. You got to, I mean, because what it becomes, what I've noticed when industries follow industries, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't, but it becomes everybody starts looking the same. And you lose the uniqueness of who you are. I believe in having several different industries who are talking about business building and the process, regardless of what industry you're in, in order to grow your business. Because everybody just starts looking the same in the industry. You know, they're running to each other's page, you know, doing exactly what the other person does. They start trying to um, price their services so that they're lower than what they feel the competition is. And when you can move out of that space and move into the space of really being able to identify the value of what you have to offer, your pricing is not done like that at all. So I walk my clients strategically through how to price their services based on the value in the marketplace and not what old girl is charging. Does that make sense to you guys? Is, am I making sense to you all? We're talking about teaching what you know and creating an additional stream of revenue, um, six-figure stream of revenue. And so, so many people come to me, look, and we get to this point, because, okay, if I had to think about a way that I normally work with clients, so most clients have some type of business or um, service or product that they provide to individuals. So many of them come to me in the beginning to kind of fix that business or 
not even fix, but to enhance it, to grow it, to build it even more. We go through the process of, you know, creating a way to work them out of just simply being self-employed, which means they go to the next level and they start working on self-development, self-leadership rather, right? And then they go into building a team. And then after building a team, most people are working themselves out of a job. That's the goal. Y'all put this in the comments. My job is to work myself out of a job. My job is to work myself out of a job. As a business owner, my job is to work myself out of a job, right? And so we go through the stage of creating what that looks like, them working themselves out of a job. And it's, you know, once they're hiring staff and things of that nature, but most people are also looking for an additional revenue stream, right? So they step into a visionary space. They're still, they still have this revenue stream where they duplicated their services and have other people working for them or automation and systems that allow them to continue earning revenue. But then we move to this next phase where many people are like, well, I mean, I love what I do, but I don't want to do it in that way anymore. Does that make sense? I love what I do, but I don't want to do it in that way anymore. I want more time freedom. I want to step into a new role. I want to be able to sit and think of really have time to think and process how I'm going to move that business forward without being overwhelmed or having to put out fires or trade my time for dollars. So this is the next phase most people are at um, in, in their business when they come to work with me or we work up to that point. And at that point, I help people to take what they have become experts at, what they've become good at, and monetize it, right? Whether that's looking through the services and products in their business and finding their premium offer, turning it into that signature offer, and then allowing it to create revenue. And I mean, we can build businesses however we want. So I'm not saying that my way is the only way, right? But it is the ultimate way for the clients that desire to work with me because many of my clients want time freedom. Many of my clients are wanting to move into a space where their life is more simplified. Doesn't mean they're not active, right? It doesn't mean they're, they aren't involved. It just means that they're selective. I'm going to put that in the comments. It means they are now selective. How many of you feel that you are in a space in your life where you are selective? You're selective about your friendships. You're selective about the places that you go. You're selective about the energy that you are willing to put into certain things. You are selective about the amount of time you want to spend on certain things, or even if you want to spend your time doing that. So it may get to the point where you start looking at things that you offer and you're like, I don't want to offer any of that anymore. If that's you, put me in the comments. If any of you are like at that point or you've already crossed that point where you're like, it's certain things that I'm just not offering anymore. I don't want to do that. That's It doesn't feel good to me anymore. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just, I don't want to do that anymore. All right? So most of the clients that are coming to me you know, they're at this space. They're becoming selective in not only their life, but also in their business building process. Uh, when we think of people like Steve Jobs, Steve ain't in there building the computers. Well, I mean, rest his soul. We, you all understand what I'm saying. When he was still living, he was not Jeff Bezos at, you know, Amazon. They're not shipping packages. Is this making sense to you all? And what I find that many people are looking for, and they never had the words for it because I didn't either, is freedom. I think our evolution is, you know, our next step of just looking for what does that next level of freedom look like to you, right? What is it that you want to free yourself from? What is it that you want to be free to do that the way you did things before, it simply won't allow it, right? Without making a whole lot of um, adjustments, right? The flow that you're operating in now, it, it just simply won't allow the measure of freedom that you desire. Guys, I, 
I've never... I, I've never understood freedom the way that I understand it now because I'm walking in it, right? So there was a time where, you know, for me, earning more meant I needed to work more. Um, earning more me meant I had to spend more time doing it. Now, earning more means I have to give more value. Oh, have mercy. Now, for me, earning more means I have to give more value. And what I mean by more value, it may mean I need to cultivate something within me, right? So that I can provide value for someone else who's going to find value enough to invest at the next level. But earning more, it just doesn't mean the same to me anymore. And time freedom has a, a, a value that is, I mean, I've always, I always known that I wanted more time freedom, but I didn't know what it looked like. I didn't know how to make that happen. Earlier in my entrepreneurial career, like the very early years, I understood that if I wanted more money, I go work more. Now I go deep before I go wide, meaning I'm not trying to work more. I am developing and cultivating things so that I add more value. And more value doesn't mean more stuff. So if I was able to help you monetize something that would allow you to earn an additional six-figure stream of revenue, and you were able to not work as hard as you did before, like hands-on and things of that nature, you could spend more time with your family, you could do more, you could take care of your parents if you desired. You know, maybe you're, you have philanthropy desires where you want to give big to the church or the community. If I provided something that allowed you to create that, how valuable would that be to you? Does that make sense? Is it, am I making sense? You guys put yes in the comments if I'm making sense to you all. Because many people are pricing things thinking about cost when they're thinking about their services and not value. And if you have a transformational thing that's changing someone's, the trajectory of someone's life and business tremendously, then it has high value. I hope I'm making sense to you guys. I hope I'm making sense to you guys, right? So when you think about what it is that you may wanna transition to, what it is that you wanna monetize, let me see, I took some, um, I took some notes here. So one of the things I do, I did this program and you all should have called it then, right? <laughs> um, but it's called Teach What You Know. And I think I launched it maybe about three years ago now. <clears throat> and I offered it as a beta. So I had a few people to come in, take course or whatever. And then I didn't offer it anymore. And the only way that I offer it now is inside my mastermind or if someone works with me privately. And so inside the Teach What You Know, I help you to identify what your thing is, what that signature offer is, that signature product, signature course or program that you wanna build. So after we identify what that signature thing is, we develop and create how you're going to market it. So what platform are you gonna put it on? For one, there are several things. So there's so many opportunities when you've created that, that thing that's gonna allow you to earn that additional six figures of revenue. You can decide whether or not it's something that you wanna do in person. So the way we create the opportunity is you can do it interchangeably. So you can offer it as an in-person opportunity. You can offer it as a uh, self-study where it's online and people purchase it and you don't have to you know, visibly be there for them to uh, take the course. You can do it as a hybrid where you're partially live and you're also recorded. You have some of it recorded. You can offer it in a group coaching program. So we pick which way is going to be best for you. And we decide that we do assessments to decide which one is really going to work better for you. Now, this is why I believe that we have to be really clear about where we want our life and our business to head. I, clarity is everything, guys. For me, I knew I wanted time freedom. 
And I also wanted financial freedom. So I wanted to make a lot of money and I didn't want to have to do trade a whole lot of my time for it. Now, I was willing to exchange a lot of my value, which is something that I continue to build on all the time. And then we work on sales. So I even give you media opportunities for promoting the thing that we create, uh, your sales page. So we walk through the whole thing. And see, this is where value uh, takes the place of cost. Y'all guys don't hear me. Because many people are looking for cost and when they're thinking cost wise, instead of investing in the value, they normally get something that only partially serves what it is that they want to do. And so because I understand the value of this opportunity, it allows you to create an opportunity that can earn you six figures and then earn you six figures over and over and over again. So the value of it is prices. It's not just this practical, tactical thing that you do. It's the fullness of you turning your intellectual property, your expertise, or your signature product into something that has the ability to earn you six figures or more. 